Hello and welcome everyone to my review of The White Door. The White Door is a point and click puzzle game developed by Rusty Lake, and while it is part of a larger series or story, it serves as a spin-off, so being unfamiliar with the previous game shouldn't hamper your experience too much, I certainly didn't feel like I was missing anything while playing it. So, the core of the game is a pretty simple loop centred around the main character's time at a mental health clinic, and the gameplay will have you interacting with both sides of a split screen. So this can include moving someone's eyelids or searching a room for clues, and what you are doing is largely dependent on the section of the game you are at. But there is a nice amount of variety, and I've not seen many games make the player feel quite so involved in the more mundane parts of the story. You will flip-flop between a day of basic tasks at the clinic and dreams of the main character. The latter serves to deliver the backstory and the former shows him in his present day. The first thing that struck me about this game was the incredibly simple aesthetic and the strange looking split screen. Throughout the game, the window is always split vertically down the centre and each side serves a purpose. During the days in the clinic for example, the left hand side is a top down view of the room and the right hand side is a close up of whatever your character is near, and during the dreams the left is exclusively for dialogue and the right is just for the visuals. It's a simple way to lay out all the information the player needs and gives the game a pretty unique look. In general, when considering the themes of mental health and depression, the muted, plain look of the game fits very appropriately. In fact, despite liking the aesthetic, I don't think this game looks particularly special. Having said that, with how cheap this game is, I don't mind, especially when considering it's fully voice acted with pretty decent voice acting. I stopped for a red light. A beggar walked up to the car. I rolled down the window. I would actually go as far as to say that a lot of bigger games are kind of put to shame in this regard. I think voice acting in games is almost always overacted and cheesy. In The White Door, it's very low-key and human, reflecting the nature of the themes on display. I also have to mention that the soundtrack fits the game incredibly well. It's a glacially paced, ambient, incredibly somber and smoky soundtrack. All of these points lead me to the conclusion that the team behind this game had a very clear artistic vision for this game. So from an artistic perspective, I can certainly appreciate a lot of what's going on here, but how does it actually play as a game? Well, as previously stated, it's a point and click puzzle game, and I personally feel like this is where the game falls apart a little. The days in the clinic are spent doing the same loop based on a rotor. Most of them are basic tasks which take a very short amount of time to complete and considering the character has pretty severe memory loss, the idea of a routine fits in with this theme, but my personal issue comes with the puzzles. Nearly every puzzle is some variation of go find the thing in the room that has the required information on it, and this gets pretty tedious pretty quickly. I've, it's never too hard, so it isn't a huge negative, but there are other examples of repetitive puzzles or gameplay that I'll get into in the spoiler section of this review. Overall though, the gameplay is just a little bland, it's mostly busy work, just designed for touchscreens. This makes sense because the developers primarily create games for mobile devices, and this doesn't translate so well to PC, but at the same time, I don't think most people who end up liking this game are going to be here for the gameplay, they're going to be here for the story. To give an overview, the main character suffers from memory loss and has suffered some kind of traumatic event. You follow this character picking up bits of his story through his dreams, and without going too heavily in spoilers I'll say there's a lot of charm to the story, not just in the events but also how it's presented. The story is kind of intriguing, feels very human and has just the right amount of oddities and strangeness to keep the player engaged for basically the entire game. To explain further, I'm going to need to discuss spoilers, so if this game sounds like it's up your alley, I would actually suggest skipping to my closing thoughts. I'll leave a timestamp in either the description or it'll be up on the screen right now. She was tired, but the story of this game is effectively a man going through a couple unfortunate events in his life and admitting himself into a mental health clinic to help himself get better. The way this is presented implies the short term memory loss was on set as a result of these events, starting with his partner breaking up with him, losing his job, and shifting into a fragile state of mind. 
Generally speaking, I think the majority of the story beats are pretty standard but reasonably well presented, specifically the stuff around the midpoint of the game. After about day three or four, things are shown to the audience, such as the silhouette of, a main, of the main character that seems to occasionally take over during the clinic sessions, or metaphorical events such as the main character shooting himself in the head, then going to a party in the dream sections. But as previously mentioned, I think the story is the strongest point and the main reason to play this game. Going back to the gameplay though, I mentioned there was a type of puzzle that repeated itself throughout the game, and that is the Simon Says puzzle. For those unfamiliar, a Simon Says puzzle is one in which you just have to remember a sequence. I'm pretty sure there are about seven or eight of these puzzles in the game. They are presented differently each time, sometimes you're popping bubbles, other times you're rustling leaves, but functionally they are all click the things in the right order. And between this and the search of the room puzzles, it does lead to the gameplay feeling a little bit stale. Also, I have to mention thematically, the Simon Says puzzle doesn't really make much sense other than it's also related to memory, I suppose. And I think searching a room to recollect who your character is and going on that journey with him makes a lot more thematic sense. Finally, in this section though, I wanted to mention that the way the game makes you interact with the mundane while interesting and unique, is a slightly overused tool and occasionally comes off as cheesy. For example, there's a moment wherein a character is crying, so you have to click both eyes to make the tears come out, and then you have to click again to make them fall off the character's chin. To me, that just kind of it came across a little overkill. It sort of made me chuckle where I probably should have been feeling some sort of emotion. Before wrapping up, I want to talk a little more about the themes of the game and the interesting things the White Door does in this regard. Right from the get-go, it's apparent that the main character is depressed. This is signalled by the room being completely white and the dreams or flashbacks being presented in colour. People suffering from depression will often say that it makes life incredibly bland and everything becomes dull, colourless and feels somewhat pointless. A game devoid of colour when the main character is in this mental state is a nice visual representation of this. And at the end of the game, when the character gets his memories back, the game goes through a sequence where you perform each task based on the rotor set from the clinic, and the colour for that segment of the room returns. This is a nice visual representation of his mind state improving. During this segment, he also confronts his silhouette form, which to me implies he's made peace with his struggles and accepted all aspects of himself. I also think, as this game goes on, less of it is meant to be taken literally. For example, in Day 1's dream, he gets broken up with, but on Day 4's dream, he shoots himself in the head and attends a party with a literal hole in his head. I think most of these can be taken as dark thoughts. Where the game gets incredibly strange, though, is in the alternative ending. If you complete the game, you're rewarded with a flashback to how he met his partner. In addition, the hidden star levels will earn you an alternate ending that implies the mental health clinic removed her from your character's memory. Memory. Read into that how you will. I felt like it was a little unnecessary. I kind of thought the core story was pretty tight as is and held, its, held the game up on its own. Overall, I think The White Door is a pretty enjoyable little game. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it, got, it does a good job of conveying a tight atmospheric package of themes with a nice story. Just don't come here expecting incredible game design, and I would highly suggest playing this on something with a touchscreen. I would give this game a 6.5 out of 10, and I think you, I could easily see a lot of other people enjoying it more than I did. Um, also, considering that it's about £3 for a couple of hours, I don't think many people will have an issue buying this on a whim to try it. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're at all interested in checking out my other content, I stream over at Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays with uh, Dark Souls-Soulsborne type stuff, and then on Fridays I do indie games as well. So make sure to go check out my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Thank you.